Okay, um, good afternoon students, good morning or good evening, wherever you're watching from. This is Mr. Yomi, a mathematics teacher at this point international school. And today we'll be looking at a very important topic in mathematics. Actually, it's a foundational topic in mathematics. And the topic is indices. Actually, the word indices from the word index, from the word index, which means to raise to power, to raise to power. So you can have something like this, something like this, and something like this. This is power, this is index. Okay, so we have the word index in singular and then we have the word indices like you have your normal um, just the way we have a starting word that are having singular and then you have them in plural so this is the index and then this is indices and to navigate through this topic properly it's important you know the rules that are associated with the topic and so the topic has some rules and so we have what we call the rules of indices. I will be looking at the rules and then we go into some solving immediately. So we look at number one, multiplication rule. Multiplication rule. Here, what we have is that when we have a situation like this, you have a situation like this, the base are the same. Whenever the base are the same, you add the power. Whenever the base are the same, the power will be added. And so we call it multiplication rule. Maybe you may want to call it addition rule since I'm adding them. Number two, we have what we call division rule. Now, before I look at this division rule, now I like to give an example here. For example, if you have something like this and you have something say like this, obviously the power is the same. You have two raised to power five. Why? Because you are adding three plus two, and that gives you five. Division rule. Here you have something like this. The power is the same, and then you can see the base is the same like that. And then whenever you have a situation like this, you minus it. You minus it. And so here we have a, and then here we have a. What happened to the power? You minus the number three. What do we do here? Number three, we have the power rule. And so, in this case, you have something like this. And let me proceed here. Let me proceed here. In a power rule, here, I'm calling it power rule because I want to prove to you that power can multiply power. And so, multiplying this by this will give you A multiplied by C. What does this imply? Just as we have here, let me do an example here for you. Here we have say minus, or let me go one. And so we have two, three minus one, and two raised to power one, two. That is the answer for this particular one. But for this now, how do we give an example in this? Let's give an example as this. We have three here as power and then we have two outside so this three is what you have here the p here is what you have here c is what you have here so power multiply power and so you have three raised to power six please take note of this this is the one multiplying this and so you have six there the next one is you must know that whenever Anything is raised to the power of zero, it is one. When anything is raised to the power of zero, it is one. When anything is raised to the power of zero, it is one. So whether it is 100 that is raised to the power of zero, you have one. Now, 
the number four is already established that anything that is raised to the power of zero, it gives you one. Anything whatsoever, either affiliate or in number, it gives you zero. Now we go to the next one, which is very important, and that's when you have something like, like this. You have something like this, looking like fractional index, and then you have something like this. When you have a app like this, it's the same thing as this. You find some people, they want to transcribe this to this, you find them going to here. If you dare go to here, it's tautology. It's like somebody saying TX, or somebody saying uh, 7 a.m. every the morning. That's tautology. There's no point. Once you have this and you put square root of A, that's the same thing. And what's the example we can look at here? Let's look at this example now. 16R. Looking at 16R, it gives you root 16 and then you have 4. That's what you have there. That's a classic example. Now we'll go to a more... Uh, now looking at this now, the next one. So we have something like this. Now, in this case, you will look at it that number 5 and number 6 almost look alike, except that there's minus in this. Now, what do you do about this minus? Do not forget division rule. Now, whenever we have minus, that must be division. And whenever we have division, that must be what? Minus. Okay, so doing this now, for me to remove this minus, I'm going to do something like this, and then bring this down. I've eliminated it. I've eliminated the minus. And that's why I introduced one over. That's division minus. Now, then we have one over square root of A. And that's what you have there. How do we transcribe it? Let's use exactly what we did here. So we have A2. This will give you one over 16 square root of beta still. Better still, let's say, let's simplify it this way. So we have 1 over 16, and then we have 1 over 16, and then we have 1 over 4. I'm sure that's very, very clear. I'm sure that's very, very clear. In case you're not clear, let me say it again. The difference between this and this is minus. The minus sign from division rule, you have this. And this is the same thing as this. And then I want to particularize what we have just done. So we have this. This is 1 over 16 raised to power half. And then the half there is the square root 16. And then square root of 16, you have 4. Now we go to the next, which is 7. And now this is very important. This is a situation where you have something like this. In this case now, how do you interpret this, please? It's important to know how to interpret it. To interpret this, we are going to have something like this. Now, we introduce our minus y to eliminate this. So we have a, we have 2, then we have 3. What's the next thing? 1 over, watch now, this is denominator. Denominator comes in here. And then you have your uh, the, the value, the A here, and then why numerator comes here. Why is it so? Now you will discover all the one we've been doing before. Our numerator was unity, was one. Unlike this, our numerator is not unity. What I mean is I know the numerator is not one here, it's two. So you can see here minus two over three. Now the reason I change this to this, of course, you know this is minus, and then you have this. Now, then you have two, which is the numerator, and then the numerator, you have your three. Then the three, which is like, so this is the same thing as when you have two over three, this is the same thing as, watch, watch now, one times three, two. This is like cube roots, and that's why we have the cube roots here. Why this is the power in numerator? That is why we have it here. That's why we have it here. This is so important for you to know. So, now, quickly, how do we explain this using this index of calculation? So, let's quickly look at something. We have 64. 
we have 64 and then we have 2 over 3. So quickly this becomes 1 over 64, 2 over 3, that's 1 over square root of 64. 3 will be here and 2 will be here. Now how do we go about that? So we say what's the cube root of 64? What that means is that when you think of number, we can multiply into three places that will give us 64. So we have 1 over 4. Do not forget that's the cube root. And then we have a square value right there. So if you have square, and then we have 1 over 16. So our answer now is 1 over 16. Till I come your way again, I remain your main Omarewa, your favorite math teacher at this way international school. Thank you. Bye. Okay, welcome to this way international school channel. Uh, we would like to continue from our previous class, still looking at laws of indices or rules of indices. Now, it's important you familiarize yourself with those laws or those rules. Number eight, I consider one to seven. In case you are just coming, you can uh, endeavor to follow up. Number eight, we were looking at something like this. In this case now, you have a numerator and a denominator as power, and then look at your base two. So, what do you do? You simply do it this way. If you have been following, you will know that this is going to give us this. The cube root here, 1 over 3, multiplied by 2, that's why we have the cube root here. And then the power which is 2, that's what we have there. Now we're going to be looking at the example of how this can be applied in focus solving. Number 9, which is the last thing of what I've been considering. The last thing, number 9, here you have A over B, all raised to power minus 2 over 3. A situation like this, don't, do not forget our minus we remove it by introducing one, we we'll explained that earlier. So we have this over this. Our denominator will be here and our power will remain here. This is what we're going to have. And this is quite simple and straightforward. Now, let's look at line example as we go now. So let's solve example. So question now. So let's quickly go to question number one. Simplify the following. Question 2, evaluate
So we have all of this. We have all of this to take care of. So we quickly saw number one. Number one, we have three, we have two. We have to bring in this together and bring this together. Okay, so we have three, two, and then there is about four. And then we have this place to part two. So from the law of indices multiplication, we are adding the power. So we have this. And then we are having this. So this will give us two minus four. And this will give us five. So therefore, we have minus two for here. And we have two raised to power five here. You can also say that two raised to power five or three raised to power two for here. Okay? So we can also express this in this regard and say two raised to power five divided by three raised to power two. And this is the same thing as 32 over 9 as our final answer. So till like come your way again by two from our division law we have two raised to power three divided by two raised to power four. Okay now from our law we know that this is the same thing as two raised to power two you can see now minus the bracket this automatically we have this now minus times minus that's plus and then we have four so this is two raised to power seven okay two raised to power seven uh, that's uh, two raised to power five thirty two two raised to power six sixty four and two raised to power seven one twenty eight so the answer is one twenty eight Okay, so we, we want to deal with this. Dealing with this is not an issue. So the answer to this obviously is fine. Just Q go to 125. So I'm not going to solve this. That's the answer to this. How do you do this now? The Q goes, the answer to this is 4. <laughs> it has been solved already. But you can try it and solve. And then in case you're not clear with what I just said, I said that is 5 if you solve. This is uh, 4 if you solve. And then uh, you don't get what I just told you now. Drop it in the comment section. It will be explained. Let me move to this quickly. So you have 27 divided by 8. Now, from our law, we know that this is the same thing as 1 over 27 divided by 8. From what we have explained previously. And this is the same thing as this. 27 divided by 8, our 3 year denominator, and then our power here. So from what we have here, we know that number we can multiply to 3 places, the cubot, into three places. So we say, what number can I multiply into three places to give me 27? Three times three times three. Okay, thank you. That is three. And then I ask myself for eight. What number can I multiply into three places to give me eight? Obviously it's two. So I have that. And this will give me two. So one over three raised to power two, that's nine. 2 raised to power 2, that's 4. And so we invert it, that's um, uh, 4 over 9. That's the answer to the question. Okay, so we're looking at E. You wonder I jump D. D is quite simple now. This is 2. This is 3. 2 plus 3. No, sorry, this is 2. <laughs> This is 5, 2 plus 5, what do you have? That's uh, 7, raised to power 2, that's 49. Okay, so I'm not doing that now. So let's go to E. Our E says...
Okay, so let's treat the human being here. Leave this equation and treat this. So we have two, we have 64, and then 1 over 64. I guess you know why I did that now, for the minus. So we have this, 64, 125, 3, and then we have our uh, 2 here, thank you. So this will be give us what, 1? Now by the way, the this is to give me 64, that's 4, 4 times 4 times 4. Now by the way, the to three places to give me 1, 2, 5, that's 5, and then the square, I will put it there. So I'm going to have 1 over 16, that's 4 is to power 2, and then 5 is to power 2, that's 25. So this will give me 16, 25 over 16. Remember, I have 2 divided by 25 over 16, which is 2 multiplied by 16 over 25. And that is 32 over 25, which is 1 over 7 over 25. Okay, we're looking at we're solving our last question under this. In this is our last question to be solved. So we're looking at a question now. 3 raised to by n minus 1 multiplied by 3 7 n plus 1 over 81 raised to the power n. This is pretty simple. Just express it in terms of 3. So you have this now. Now, let that come to this first. You have raised to the power 3, n plus 1. Close it. This is the same thing as 3 raised to the power 4. Then you have n there. Come down and ask yourself, what can you do there? So you have 3 raised to the power n. So we have this. And then, from here, we have n, 3n plus 3, over 3 raised to the power 4. And so I have this. Now look at this now. I will split this two. I will have this. And then I will split it from the law of indices. Law of multiplication. Then I will have this. So from here, I will ask myself what is common? What is common? So you can see what's, what's, what's happening here. This plus this. So I will have 3 raised to power n times 3 raised to power n times minus 1 times 3 raised to power 3 over 3 raised to power 4n. This is the same thing as 3 raised to power 4n, 3 raised to power minus 1 and 3 raised to power 3 over 3 raised to power 4n. Cancel, cancel. I am left with 3 raised to power minus 1 times 3 raised to power 3. Now, the same thing, that is the same thing as 3 raised to power 3 over 3. That's it, that's it. Which is 27 over 3, and then you have, what do you have there? 9. So our answer is 9. Uh, I bring the teaching on indices to a close. Till I come your way to consider in teacher equation, I remain your mean or more ever. I must